It is amusing to hear some people refer to Jesus Christ as though he were the son of Joseph and Mary Christ. Christ is a Greek title, not the Lord's last name. I prefer to use the Hebrew title Mashiach, in English, Messiah, in place of the Greek term Christos or Christ, because the Greeks called all of their gods, from Adonis to Zeus, Christos, which means anointed. When I use the term Messiah, however, I am referring to the very one of which Moses spoke, you must listen to that prophet. I also prefer to use the Lord's Hebrew name, Yahshua, rather than his Gentile nickname, Jesus. Yahshua is a compound name in Hebrew that means Yah, the short form of Yahweh, is our Yeshua, or salvation. Yahweh Yeshua, or commonly, Yahshua. I love the name Yahshua. I also use Yeshua, which is the same as saying Savior. The precursor to the beginning of the time of Jacob's trouble is the prophesied return of Israel to their homeland. The return to the land has provoked a tidal assault against the Jewish people by Islamic tribes who have vowed to exterminate the Jews from the entire planet and then to destroy the Christians. And they, the Gentiles, shall know that my name is, and the King James Version reads, the Lord. The Lord is not even a name. It is simply a title given to every British landowner for the past thousand years. That is no great revelation. But every time you see capital L, capital O, capital R, and capital D in your King James Version of the Bible, the Hebrew letters are yud Hey vav Hey, which is the name of the Lord. Give unto Yahweh the glory due unto his name. Throughout scripture, the Heavenly Father urges everyone to call upon His name. Praise the Lord, call upon His name, declare His doings among the people. Make mention that His name is exalted. Lord, however, is not His name. It is only a title, like Mr. or Mrs. The original word in Hebrew is Yahweh, which means, I am that I am. It is on this name, Yahweh, that all are invited to call. At the burning bush, Moses told Yahweh, when I return to Egypt and say, the God of your fathers has sent me to you, they are going to ask, what is his name? What shall I say to them? As translated into English by the King James Version of the Bible, the answer given Moses was, I am that I am. Thus shall thou say unto the children of Israel, I am hath sent me unto you. And he said moreover unto Moses, Thus shalt thou say unto the children of Israel, Yahweh hath sent me unto you. This is my name forever, and this is my memorial unto all generations. Before repeating the name that Moses already knew, Yahweh explained his name by using the same verb in a form that revealed the power within his name. The phrase translated as I am that I am comes from the Hebrew word Hahya. It means to be. When Moses asked, who shall I say sent me? The answer was, be, be. Hahya is a very powerful word. The use of Hahya in such passages declares the actual release of power so that the accomplishment is assured. Hahya was used at the creation of the world. Light, be, light was. Die Himmel sind durch das Wort des Herrn gemacht und ihr ganzes Heer durch den Hauch seines Mundes. Denn er sprach und es geschah. Er gebot und es stand da. Rufe mich an, so will ich dir antworten und dir große und unbegreifliche Dinge verkünden, die du nicht weißt. Und die Propheten, die selbst erfundenen Betrug weissagen, haben sie nicht im Sinn, bei meinem Volk meinen Namen in Vergessenheit zu bringen durch die Träume, die sie einander erzählen, gleich wie ihre Väter meinen Namen vergessen haben über dem Baal? 
Du aber, o oh Herr, bist unser Vater, und dein Name ist unser Erlöser von Ewigkeit her. I want you to understand what Yahweh means to us here tonight. There are at least 270 names for God in the Bible. He is so glorious, so enormous. And every one of those names reveals some facet about his life and his character. One commonly used name is El or Elohim. We find that in El Shaddai, God Almighty. We find it in Bethel, the house of God. We find it in Emmanuel, God with us. But Yahweh is different. Yahweh is much more personal. It's often translated Lord, and it's used when God made humanity. It's used when Abraham climbed Mount Moriah, the place where eventually the temple was built and the area in which our Lord Jesus Christ died. It was used as he set up the mountain in order to worship God. The first time worship is used, the word worship. And God provides a sacrifice and reveals himself as Yahweh. We often think of it as Jehovah. That is the Latin name for Yahweh. We find it in words like hallelujah, which means to celebrate God, our Lord. But the revelation reaches its culmination in Exodus chapter 3, when God reveals himself to his people. And he says, I am that I am. really a spiritual journey and so you can see where you're at in your spiritual journey by understanding which letter you are on. You really have the DNA of Yahweh uh, of mankind built into the Hebrew alphabet. He says he created the universe through his word. This is the language that he chose to speak that is creative in form. Melech, which means king, means the water of instruction brings anointing. This, my friends, is why Yeshua had to be baptized. He wants all mankind to come to him. And the only way that you can come to him is Yod. And Yod is the right hand power of God. It is the first letter in his name. No man comes to the Father except through the crowned man, the Son. There can be nothing more life-changing than understanding the supernatural frequency of Yahweh's language, the Hebrew alphabet, and understanding every letter is connected to your spiritual journey.